it was now us and God. Anything we needed, I remember I would cry to God overnight. And like God would literally give us anything that we needed. And I remember asking God, why should we leave a comfortable church and go start an altar? And I remember the voice of God was so clear that the people I'm going to gather for that altar. And I remember Bamboo at this particular point, the, there were like 30 people who came when we summoned now friends to come and we told them we want to launch out, we want to open a prayer center, a church, a, an altar. God, many didn't come, but a specific people God had a plan for came and that is when i realized he's a god of hosts but only then i realized you invite a thousand they show up 20. <laughs> we, were, we were so sure from how we were in those days if we call people either church will be built overnight mm -hmm. but no. shock on us yes yes and it was not <laughs> And it's important that, you know, even when, when men of God are called into ministry, remember that don't stray from the scripture because the scripture gives clear instructions. It says, in the morning, sow your seed, and in the evening, withdraw not your hand, for you know not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or yeah. that, or whether they both shall be alike good. That means that, yes, do your ministry, but also be in business. Mm. Otherwise, you'll put your family through suffering for the first few years of ministry, and you don't want to do that because the children will, again, hate. they'll hate ministry. Mm. They'll hate the thing. So, and, and also, many men of God will say, uh, the Lord told me to quit everything and start ministry. Th the Lord did not say that mm. because the Lord does not say anything different than what is written in his word. Mm. So even if you heard a voice, you sure did hear a voice, but that was not God. That was the devil. Mm. Wanting to you know, frustrate spirits. you in the yes. ministry. Yes, to bring hardship upon your family. So that you can so, give up. Yes, mm. and, you're, and in your beginning stages, you'll be rushing God to get a crowd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, milking, a milking flock. Yes. Mm. Meanwhile, the size of that congregation has everything to do with the size of your own spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. So you are rushing your spiritual growth, which is something God is not going to participate in. <laughs> you they can have... come hundred to kill you yeah. as a pastor because yeah. you don't have the capacity to feed them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So it has everything to do with you. So be in business and also uh, do ministry so that, you know, you're also not putting pressure on your congregation yes. and coming up with doctrines that are not in line with the word of God so that you can feed your family. You see, you don't want to put yourself in that predicament. And mm. many churches are built on that same predicament, that problem. He has to feed his family. He, he heard God tell him to drop his business, sell everything, and go into full-time ministry. God never said that. Mm. God did not say that. Unless the heavens opened yeah. and a thundering <laughs> and voice. a lightning voice said, drop everything Behold. and go into ministry i have commanded you if you did not have an encounter like that you heard some small voice in your spirit or you it heard someone say, that's the not the lord that's it the, looks actually the devil speaking that's the so devil loudly. speaking yes We're talking about voices you know i i know very many people out there having similar experiences hearing strange voices mm. like i felt i needed to write a will a will yes. yeah this is how you 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 defeat those voices you declare the word of god that speaks against that voice like when satan started talking to jesus he said it is written so when the enemy is telling you to write the will, you say, I will not die. I will mm. live to declare the, the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what I did until I could not hear those voices anymore. And the effect of those voices on my life was uh, normally I dream. And when I dream, I wake up and I remember my dream. Mm -hmm. And most of my dreams are very accurate. I can dream that I'm, I'm going in such a place, I'm going to meet this person and this person will help me. I go to a place and I meet the same person and the person helps me. Now, from the time I had started hearing those voices, I would dream and not remember anything. Mm -hmm. So I started now also uh, counter, uh, you know, fighting 
those the voices. voices with the word of God. I would get scriptures uh, 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 that talk about the situation that I'm going through. And then I start now saying them out loud because the enemy doesn't want you to confess. He doesn't want you to say out the word of God because the word of God is life. So when, when you, when you, you keep quiet or you fear, you allow fear to enter you, then you, you, you get depressed. You start feeling suicidal. You start feeling sick. You start hating yourself. That's the time I was feeling, you know, uh, so much headache, so so dizzy. You feel like I think I need to go to hospital. Maybe I'm sick. You know, you maybe just I will, yeah. You yeah me maybe die. if I get out of this house and I I'm traveling, maybe I'll die in an accident. You start fearing everything, but when you learn to fight with the word of God, the enemy cannot do anything to your life. Amen. Amen. And First Corinthians chapter seven verse twenty three. Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He says, you are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Do not be the servants of men. In other words, God does not want his church to be employed by wickedness. Yes. Yeah, he does not want that. And so he has created a system for us in the kingdom of God that every man should live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, right? And then he tells you how to fill your heart with the correct substance that can create a good life for you, right? It is something that we each create on an individual basis, meaning that like when in Joshua 1.8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Why is he telling you to do that? It's a prescription. Even if if you got sick, you go to the hospital, you're prescribed for malaria, you know, uh, medication for malaria, and you're told to take one in the morning, one in the evening. The same system in the kingdom of God. He says, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means a minimum of twice a day you should be meditating in God's word. In other words, to fill your heart with scriptures that are you know, the promises of God, the will of God for your life. Why? Because your life is a fountain of the contents that have been programmed in your spirit, man. So your life, that's the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God. Your life can change, but it is dependent upon the contents of your heart. In other words, just like if you have a bowl of soup, if it tastes bad, it's because the ingredients in that soup are bad. So your life is the same way. Are you having repetitious experiences that are unfortunate that are ungodly it's because the contents also are ungodly and usually the contents your products of your environment you know you grow up in in an environment where people are name calling you're going to work and in also in an environment where people are cussing you out and you are you are uh, being insulted you and you can't say anything back people are speaking over you and you're not speaking back you can't speak back that means he can prophesy over you but you cannot prophesy back and so he's filling your heart and your mind with bad ingredients so this is why it's so crucial to take time out every believer has to do this jesus said a good man out of the good contents of the heart brings forth good things what was he saying he's saying the good treasures of your heart bring forth a good life your life is headed in the direction of your deepest held convictions so the things that you have stored up in your heart they will continuously show up in your life so that's why he's telling you to meditate in the scriptures day and night so that the contents of your heart changes and the will of God begins to find expression in your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So without that technology, and that's, that's the kingdom of God. Now, without that technology, you'll be going to church looking for miracles. You'll be, you'll be sowing seeds. You'll be tithing. You'll be doing all of these things. But that's not what he commanded you to do. He told you man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you see the same thing being repeated in Psalms 1. He says, blessed is the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners or hanging out, hanging out with sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The scornful are those who make fun of the church and make fun of, you know, like they call that church money pesos a canisa because it's pennies. They, they, you know, they're the seat of the scornful. They're making fun or insulting the things of God. Even when you I know, was not uh, yet uh, saved in the ghetto, 
when you're referring to a thief, you say, man, that's a pastor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, now, it, you know, blesses the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So it is mentioned again, and out of, uh, you know, anytime you want to see that God is emphasizing something, just check if he said it twice. Yeah, once it's enough, but if he says it twice, it's heavy. So he commands us to meditate in the scriptures day and night so that our spirit man can be filled with the right content that can produce the kind of life that God wants to see happening in your life. If you do not live by that principle, you'll be a subject of the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world that govern your location. There are principalities in Nairobi. There are principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness in Los Angeles, in London, in Paris, in Lagos, wherever you are in the world. So if you do not have the word of God in your spirit, man, you are living as a subject to those powers and they can program a person's existence. They can program a future for you. And that future is not in line with God's word. That that future will bring you into a state of desperation and compromise. Yeah, because desperate people do desperate things. So what the word of God does is that it enters into your spirit man through repetition. That's how you memorize it. He He's encouraging you to memorize it. In fact, in Job, he says, he says, uh, acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. He said, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. He says, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return unto the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Then shall you put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then he says, then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense and you shall have plenty of silver. So if you see that situation is not finding expression in your life yet, it's because you have not built up his word in your heart. That is the number one key right there. Then you must understand that these principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world have a financial system that they govern. All of these businesses that are not built on the principles of the word of God are built on the principles of the kingdom of darkness. Many of these CEOs, bankers, I mean captains of industry, these people who are doing the hiring, these are some of them are high level masons. Others, you'll see them going into the Hindu temple. Other them, others are sings, you know, like they're they're very senior in those in those positions. So would you mention something on that specifically? Because that that was the last encounter, the Hindus, um, whatever. That was the last encounter I think me and him have had. Because now you see, we were also recruiting for Asians. Wow. Yes. And as much as Erica is talking about voices. At that point where a new believer has just been converted, most of them are not able to differentiate between the voice of the Holy Spirit and voices from other altars. And I think for me that was my greatest challenge in my first few years because at that point is when I'll also find myself go back to the same company because one time I'm praying for finances. Remember I've I've closed the office. I'm an intercessor in the house. And the financial crisis, like the struggles, and the, God is very, uh, very faithful. As He called us into ministry, He made sure everything that is needed for His church, He provided. And I remember He spoke loudly to us that whatever the church needs, He knows where it's going to come from. So anytime we need, I remember even the, 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 the lease of the land where we've built, he commanded a man to pay, to pay monthly on monthly basis. So anything that the church needed, God would command men. So that part we couldn't like, you know, but because we also have the heart not to compromise, we, 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 we would never bank our fam family needs on the church. 
So, and that was the start of our struggle and f- strive financially. At one particular point, I am praying God and I'm asking God, God, why would you call me? You know, the process of making. God, why would you call me? And I, I, I am not in the recruit. Remember, we are still recruiting even because I already had the clients who knew me and they can ask me for employees. They don't care if I have an office or not. So even as we are doing ministry, we are still recruiting for them. Shutting the office does not mean we are not recruiting. Recruitment, recruitment we are still doing for these companies. And so we are able to take care of our family needs. But as time went by, I, I'm also realizing I'm not able to, to, to break even in my bills and my financial needs. So I'm here praying desperately. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm an intercessor in the church and I'm, I'm also recruiting. He's also recruiting. But then our financial needs are going above what we are recruiting and getting from the recruitment industry. And at this point, I prayed and I asked God, God, would you make a way for me that I am also able to stand with the minister? Because when we, are, we, were, we were going to the office every morning, we would make money. But now I'm asking God, give me a way where I can make money and be able to support my husband even as he ministers so that we are also not depending on the flock. Remember the integrity is there. We don't want to compromise, so we are not doing fundraising. Remember, even God himself warned us, we are not doing fundraising in the church, you know, because most of the ministers who have been called have gone to a point of depending on the sheep instead of depending on who? On God. So I'm praying and deeply praying, and I hear a voice. That is why I'm I'm now backing on what Erica is saying. Not every voice is from God. Mm -hmm. And this man who hired me the very beginning and linked me it's like somehow they tap into people's prayer life and they the the, the gods can tell Mm -hmm. and i am summoned again remember i told you there's a call back for frustrated (laughs) employees you will go you will come back you remember you will go remember (laughs) he told you you will go and you will come back somehow he's sure you will come back and five years i found myself even some some uh, women in toxic relationships, mm. when they want to get out, those men, is because mm, they are possessed, they them. tell them, go, you will come back. You'll be <laughs> back. <laughs> and then she goes and then she finds herself back. In know, an oppression. Yes, and then the situation does not even improve. It becomes worse because the man knows she has nowhere to go. She yeah. came back yes. more desperate. Yeah, even the men. Yeah. So it happens. And uh, we, we really have to be sensitive to the words that are being spoken over our lives. And we, we, we have to know when to say no to those voices. Because even Goliath, if you read in the Bible, Goliath declared some words upon David's life before they went into war. And David also declared the word of God. And the word of God, because God is, God is all-powerful, whatever David declared upon Goliath came to pass. But had he kept quiet, whatever Goliath had declared upon him would have come to pass. Yeah, but it's just that David was full of the spirit of God. He knew what was happening. The, 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 the battle started spiritually before it was physical. It, and the spiritual part of it is revealed through the word because the Bible says out of the abundancy of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah, so Goliath was meaning every bit of word that he said. And David also meant every word that he said. And it came to pass. So um, we have to to align ourselves to the will of God and also to uh, root ourselves in the word of God. And also address those words that are sent to us as an oppression. I think we we also, uh, what I learned from there is that as long as the word is oppressing your spirit man, you need to counter it with the word of God immediately. Rest, you go home with a defiled soul and you, the words that have been spoken that you will come back, come to pass if you don't deal with them openly. Because remember, I'm now a full-time, I'm, I'm, I'm in ministry, I'm also doing recruitment, so I don't have an issue with finances as such, and I love God, but I've been taken back 
to a company that has compromised. So now I have come and remember while I was in prayer, I was telling God, remember this man, he used to say he will go to hell. God give him a chance to repent. So when I hear the voice to go back, I, 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 I thought it is God. I'm not able to differentiate between God and God's. So not every voice is from God with G. Yes, yes. Because God with capital G. Yes, God will not speak and call you back to oppression. If it is God really speaking to you, God would not be giving you an offer that is also linked to the demonic realm. So as I'm going back, it's like this guy is on a revenge mission. You prayed and at because the first day I met, but you will not know by the way you are dealing with those 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 Freemasons until you mention them in prayer. That night I mentioned him in prayer. He 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 appeared in my dream. That very night, as I'm groaning in prayer and I'm crying and I'm telling God, forgive and deliver those that I left behind. That night he appeared in my dream and he addressed me like come back for your money because as i was leaving that company i left some money with him and as i wanted to take him to to court somehow they frustrate you and you lose the energy to go to court so very few people even as people have been abused and gone nobody goes to court why they they also manipulate people not to proceed so and then another way you'll also know you're working for such an md is accusation they rely on accusing people they'll tell you you've stolen but you cannot speak they will tell you that you are you are, you are betray you, you are sabotaging the company but you should not open your mouth to speak you know that's oppression that's that's manipulation those are the manipulations of witchcraft also because if somebody can lie about you and others believe it that's a, manipula a manipulation of witchcraft because if he can tell a story about you and it works against you yes. you know that the powers of darkness are at work because satan is the liar he is the deceiver and he's the one who gives power to the de other deceivers to deceive and succeed in their deceptions so that power comes from him and but the, and it and and voices are very most voices that people hear are not of God mm. and the only way you'll differentiate between the voice of God and the, the voices voice of, of the demons is by knowing the Word of God you see because you hear a voice and that voice will be telling you something but because you know the Word of God you'll say no that that word is inconsistent with the character and the nature of God moreover <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah moreover you'll be I, able to recite a scripture that contradicts this thing that this person like has just told will. you Mm. Or is that in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. The other thing is, the, like if you see in the Bible, Simon Peter, mm -hmm. the Spirit revealed to him who Jesus was. Yes. And then the same Simon Peter, Jesus was saying, get behind me, Satan. Yes. He was hearing voices, but the first voice was from the Spirit. The second voice was from Satan. Yes. So Jesus was able to know that this one, no, has and, been manipulated. And that brings us to another scripture in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. He says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Mm -hmm. What is he saying? He's telling you that a, a human being is a unique creature. He lives under the influence of spirits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now he is a unique creature because he can decide which spirit he's, is going to influence his life. But otherwise, all men are puppets. It's just that these puppets have decided to live under the influence of the Spirit of God. And the other puppets have decided to live as if there are no spirits. Some have decided to live under the influence of Hindu and Hare Krishna, others Buddhist, other Islam, others, you know. So it, it, it is not in man that walks to direct his steps, meaning that men's lives are programmed by spirits. So it is when we become wise that we begin to understand that we can program our lives with the Word of God so that you're no longer a victim of the system. You're no longer a victim of maybe the government has embezzled money that was supposed to come to you, but it doesn't come to you because it went into the pockets of a minister or, or a CS. You don't have to live by that economy. There is a higher economy. Mm. It's called the kingdom of God. And this kingdom, you live by the word of God. And also, you live by being very generous to the poor. They might not teach you these things in church. In fact, please teach these things to your congregation. Yes. 
give lavishly to the poor. Mm-hmm. Visit the orphan, the widows mm-hmm. that have been left or, or uh, that have been, uh, you know, their husband died. Mm-hmm. And what happens in Africa when the husband dies? The family of the husband comes to take everything. And they grab her. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just leaves her alone. Mm-hmm. So visit the widow. Your parents, uh, your parents mm. oh that one is very po- yeah. powerful mm. you know people because people will give everything they'll sell everything they have and give, give everything at church. church and their parents their are at home is. languishing in poverty meanwhile it's a commandment and it's the first one that has a promise Actually, it says honor teaching on sunday about fathers because if you dishonor your biological father who else who who, who is this other person who's mm-hmm. going to minister mm-hmm. how are you going to yes. honor god you the father who you've never met yes mm. yes so it says honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and that you may live long upon the earth so that is a principle of both long life and prosperity to honor your parents now lots of parents have misused their children they've abused they've done this that and the other what they did to you is their business but what you do to them is yours yes. and because you understand the principle the of honor thy father and thy mother you go there you give gifts to them you bless them with money ask god to bless you with something that you can bless your parents with you'll be amazed how he answers that prayer quickly honor them very quickly and also beg them if you must on your knees mm. to put their hands on you and just say my son my daughter i bless you yeah go forth and prosper because if they do that oh you'll be amazed I, that, yeah that's one of the things that my parents did for me and that on the very day that they put my their hands on me and said we bless you go forth and prosper and flourish and they spoke words their hands were on my head and that night I could not even sleep. The excitement was crazy. Whoa. It was amazing and it and I've seen it working in my life. It's amazing. Doors just opening, all kinds of opportunities, amazing things. We just won this case against Safaricom the other day. Yeah, and it was an 8-year case, but the Lord gave us favor, changed the judge that there was one judge that was I was just allowing the case the to drag on to year after year after year. The Lord brought another judge and that judge was no nonsense. They didn't want to she didn't want to hear the the lame excuses of these other of these of the of the respondents uh, and and they were just they they were not available for court every time because they had other cases and and she said you are undermining this court we will not be held hostage. You know, you knew today was a court date. So things like that, amazing breakthroughs are taking place. Why? Supernatural. Honor, yeah. Mm. Honor your, your father, father and your mother. Many people who are suffering are suffering because of that case, because of that situation. Also, um, Proverbs 14, 31. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. So we know that in these companies where the poor are being abused, taken advantage of, it's because those spirits that are using those employers... They hate the creator of these these people. Yeah, they hate your creator. Well, the Bible says, but he that honors him has mercy on the poor. He that honors God has mercy on the poor. Let people learn that principle. Because when you see a poor person and you despise them, you don't know what you're actually doing. Spiritually, it means that you are despising his creator. I didn't know that. There's many things that we do in this life and we're just walking along and we don't know that the thing we're doing is engaging a spiritual principle that brings curses and misfortunes. Mm. In Proverbs 28, 27, it says, it says, he that has, he says, he that gives to the poor shall not lack, but he that hides his eyes will have many a curse. Can you believe it? And there's many Christians that don't give to the poor because they've already budgeted their money. Okay, you have a salary minus. So from that 100%, 30% goes in taxes. You're left with 70. Then you have 10% that's going to tithe. Then you have another 10% that goes to offering. So you're left with 50% that you must divide amongst your landlord, communications, uh, electricity, bills. Yeah. By the time the end of the month has come, you're left with nothing. And you start that process again the next month. Yeah. Repeat this process until retirement. And that's the life plan that Satan has for many human beings. So in that budget, where was the where was the budget for the poor? You see? Meanwhile, the way God wants to bless you is by that protocol of giving to the, the poor. poor. Yes. yes. 
That's how he blesses his children. Mm. That's why we that's one of the things we love to do. We lavish the poor. Why? Because we understand that principle and we know that God loves them. And God has a list of powerful blessings that he that he that he bestows on those that give to the poor. And lots of Christians are suffering because they don't know this very simple principle. He says, "Blessed is he that considers the poor." Psalms 41 from verse 1. "Blessed is he that considers the poor." The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. So that's one. Giving to the poor. Deliverance. That's what that's one of the principles. Yes. You can guarantee your deliverance. Mm. Number two, the Lord will preserve him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. So it is preservation. A, it is preservation. Mm. And he preservation. Yes, deliverance, preservation, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. Number three. Blessings. Deliverance, mm. preservation, blessings. blessings. <laughs> wow. Number four, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. <laughs> so That's there is also protection. Protection, mm. yes, from your enemies who are yeah. busy conspiring at altars of darkness, yes. taking articles of your clothing and taking them there to bewitch you or trying to call you back into employment so that they can steal your star steal your energies because satan needs the energies of people mm. he needs them to contribute to a system that is a system of bondage really because if you work at a place that is a system of bondage then you're contributing to the bondage you are. yeah mm. so yeah. satan wants you to be a contributor of that bondage take a portion of your salary and start giving lavishly to the poor he says, you will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Number the number five, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Actually, that's number six. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Number seven, that will make all his bed in his sickness. So it's also connected to your health. In other words, this thing of charity, this thing of philanthropy and giving to the less fortunate it is all inclusive. It, God will shower you with blessings because of this thing. The people now, can in the you, world do it. Yeah, there are some who do it in the world, but they do it to be seen, you know. They, they, want, they, take, a, they take a phone and, and they're showing themselves giving a dollar. They're yeah. like, you see, I gave. And Jesus or gave, giving food. <laughs> yes. Mm. Jesus gave specific instructions. Or actually, they give to also maybe draw more help from mm -hmm. the congregation, mm -hmm. from their followers. But, mm -hmm. but you also know that it, uh, if it is a principle, if they violate, sometimes it will work. If uh, you violate, yes. God, <laughs> I don't know how it works, but if it is a principle, they violate. Even the Satan, what he does, he, mis, uh, he violates the Bible yes. to work on their behalf. Yes. So they know the secrets of the, which is in the word of God. Yeah. So if they want to start a business, in, for instance, in this region, what they do, they identify uh, and need they hold our children homes. Mm. They go there and give them food. That is how they appease the spiritual principalities in those regions. Mm. And you find them uh, prospering. My yes. grandmother was a giver, yet she was a high-level sorcerer. But she was feeding the community and she never lacked money and food. Yes, because of that law, he that gives to so the poor shall not lack. So not everybody again gives. That is why now it, it brings to another one. Not every gift that comes to you is from God. It's from God, yes. yes. You see? Uh -huh. So because most of us African set up, and especially from the poor, the, the humble background, we, we love receiving so much. Not knowing that again, the enemy has advanced yes. to a point where he's also coming with gifts. Become a so slave to the, to the who, giver. Who, who, you are the kind who is, who is going to churches to be given. You're going to places to be given. Easily will you be given and then trade like Esau traded mm -hmm. with with a plate of of, of a bowl of, of soup, of dengue, right? Dango, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not every. I, I realize even in church, right? even in church, as people are coming and they, they, they want to give to you as a pastor. Not every gift nowadays I want to receive because some are giving you, but they also want you as a pastor. They know you, you've. You, your word, your prophetic word will mm -hmm. really help and back them up. To prosper in that evil handbag. way. Mm -hmm. They bring you a, a, a good a good dress, but as you receive it and speak, you speak and you back the enemy. And you know, to some extent, I realize it's a way, for example, Erica is married to Bamboo, but Erica wants to drop Bamboo and get married to Dennis. But then, Erica need the voice of a pastor so even as pastors are also receiving, it's good to be careful because 
as you are receiving and compromising God cannot be part of that joke. Yes, yeah, uh, yes. is it Eli- 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 Elisha who said no to the gifts from Naaman? And then the other thing, my grandmother, when she would give a gift and a person says no to the gift, she starts to investigate. Who is this person? Whose daughter is she? Where is she from? Why would she refuse a gift from an old woman? You know, you think she's concerned, but now she's going to monitor that person and, and fight back and retaliate. She knows that person, knows who she is. She, that person has discovered her. So mm-hmm. and the thing about sorcerers, they don't want to be discovered. Because it takes a person with um, a higher power to discover a sorcerer. When you confront them, you will, they will now start to investigate who is this person. Yes. Because now they have powers. Uh-huh. They believe that they have powers and no one can question them. Uh-huh. Now they will start investigating you. Uh-huh. When they find that you are saved and you know what you are speaking, yeah. you will be fired actually, the next actually, morning. Actually, Bamboo, let me tell you, when I went back, I hear a voice and I go back. When I go back, now I go knowing my God. Yeah. There's a song. There's a song with a lady in in Kikuyu land that that says, "Don't you know our God? Don't you know the nature of our God?" Mm. That song would really move me. When I went back, it was last year around October. I now had started watching Erica because somehow you can go knowing God, but they manipulate you mm-hmm. and you start losing confidence in God. Mm-hmm. So when I went back. I remember every time that would come heavily on me. Don't you know, in the book of Jeremiah 9, I think, they that must boast, must boast in knowing that he is a God of righteousness, kindness, and uh, there's another one, kindness, righteousness, and justice. Yes, yes. So if you know that the nature of our God is kindness, you cannot take oppression. Yes. If you know the nature of God is righteousness, you cannot compromise mm-hmm. to ungodliness. Yes. If you know the kind of the nature of our God is justice, yes. you cannot be a partaker. No matter how much your AMD is giving you as an offer, you cannot do injustice to an employee. And this goes to the HR managers who are seated in offices that are under demonic manipulation or management. Mm -hmm. Because I would be told, I remember one time when I went back, I was told to do a letter and fire someone because the MD does not like them. But I know now I went knowing. Initially, I would do that. Mm -hmm. And you find in these companies, there is a lot of the demons want to accuse Erica because they know Erica is a servant of God. But they know the power of written words. They know the power of handwriting. So the HR will be told, write a letter and accuse her of something. Mm -hmm. She did this to me. But you see now, me as a HR who doesn't know God, I'll not question. So I just write a letter. Initially, I would write the letters. So when I went back, I was told to do a letter. I said no. Mm-hmm. I said no. And at this particular point, he st- he, he wanted to, he, des- he decided to change me from HR to sales management. Because he still wants me in the company because he knows who I am spiritually. Mm-hmm. But he also didn't know that I knew who he was when I was going back. God had also revealed to me who he is Mm -hmm. spiritually. So Mm -hmm. when he kept telling me, do a letter and accuse someone of something, I said, no, I'll not do. Because I said, I remember sending him a scripture telling him that our God is not ruthless. He is kind, righteous, and he thrives in justice. And I remember when I went back now, him, he think he's manipulated me and called me back. I went and I remember he would accuse And I would also enter in prayer and pray for freedom for that employee. Mm -hmm. You know how they all will work together for good for us. Yes. They've called you into their cages, but you've also gone to to destroy and claim back the people into freedom. And I remember I would, I would, you would tell me, write a letter to Erica and accuse. And I would declare, Erica shall never be accused. And I declare this and I prophesy freedom. I, I went and I started. And I remember one of my advice I would want to give to the HR managers. If you do not find a ground to accuse and do someone a warning letter, you better resign but don't lay a letter on someone's file unjustly. Because before God, on the day of judgment, you will be answerable. Because through your letter, 
that person purpose the or destiny may not be exactly be, yeah, yeah may not be manifested. furthermore thou it is written thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor amen yeah, yeah so if they're asking you to bear false witness they're asking you to violate the laws of your god mm-hmm. and if they want you to violate is because they want to pull you out from under the hand of god into the kingdom of darkness which thrives on such injustice mm-hmm. and if you do that to somebody else the devil has an open ground to do it to you so you cannot accept because it is written what is whatsoever a man sows so also shall he reap God is not mocked. God is not made a fool of, Mm -hmm. you know. So because you understand those laws, it is better for you to be cast into the fire of the fires of Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Yeah, because God will stand with you in those fires. Yes. That fire of unemployment, that fire of maybe being deducted your 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 salary or what whatever because of the commandment of God. It is it is better because what will happen is when you're cast into those fires like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, God stands with you in those flames and that's where the new you, that's the place of promotion. You see the the temptation came, the offer came to test your, the strength of your conviction in God. This and testing. That, and actually <laughs> that is the, the biggest part of my challenge because at that particular point, I don't know how they would manipulate. That was the greatest, the most painful part of my journey. Because as I want now, I know my God. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I have refused to bow to this oppression. I don't know how they would manipulate that Dennis is my confidant. I share with him and I tell him I want to quit six months after. But even Dennis is telling me, now, if you quit rules, how shall we survive? Mm-hmm. We don't want to depend on the flock. Mm-hmm. We don't want to compromise. Yes. How will we survive? And I remember I woke up one morning after six months of being there. Now I was told to surrender the HR department and join sales department. And I knew this is a plan for me to, to leave and still not leave them in chaos. So I handed over to someone, but I'm still telling them, the, the person I was handing over to is a walk spiritually. So I'll tell her this and this do not compromise, this and this, because I remember at one point he wanted me to hand over to a girl who used to be there before and she was she was like a, a mistress to the MD. Mm-hmm. And she would she would be she would be the right candidate for him because she would literally insult the employees, deduct Actually, they also survive in deducting. People's salary from 40,000, you are paid 12. You are oh. deducted lateness, you are deduct People mm-hmm. in the, and this HR would actually do everything she's told, deduct. She, if you actually mess her ways like this, she deduct you. Wow. She would actually go to the MD and say, you know, she, this one, Erica wanted to poison your tea. And it's a lie. Mm-hmm. And she would stand in front of the MD and lie against you. Straight and, up. And she would, without <laughs> actually, she would not even blink. She would actually lay an accusation. And at this particular point, when he told me to hand over to this girl, I told her, guess what? You will rot in Kenyan jails mm-hmm. if you don't repent because God is not ruthless. You cannot return that girl. And she's so ruthless to these employees because guess what? You and God will be. Co- and I told him, I warn you not as an employee because it got to a point I broke the yoke of being an employee Mm. because I was going there three days a week but manipulated me to become a full-time employee and I remember telling him I'm already a servant of God and you cannot cage what the Lord has set free and I remember that sentence is what made me and him differ completely and he told me now I give you a notice No, no I give you one month, if you don't, your performance does not improve. I told him, no, don't forget about one month. I'm willing to leave even today because for me, I think I have done my part. I came here and I warn you, if you don't, you are, I already know who you are. And funny enough, I'd also hired a guy who is in ministry, up like Dennis. And I remember this guy left, went, he, he called this guy, like now calling Babu, and told this, told this guy, you know you are lying, you didn't go to see clients. So he wanted to attack, morning attacks, mm-hmm. as he does to other employees, he wanted to do to this guy, but this guy no God. 
And I remember that guy entered in prayer and came back the following morning and went sat with him and I told him, by the way, you consult. I hadn't told this, this guy anything, but this guy unmasked from the place of prayer. At the place of prayer, the secrets are revealed. Yes. So this guy came back to him and told him, I know who you are and what you have been doing. And God has warned you, if you don't stop what you're doing, the wrath of God is coming heavily on you. And so this guy resigned and left. One month later, I went to his desk and I told him, guess what? I came knowing who you are. And if you don't stop what you're doing, the wrath of God. And I told him, God ministered to me. If you don't shut ma that mouth that you used to, to, to oppress employee, God is going to permanently shut your mouth. Like, like he shut, who, who is this in the Bible who was shut until a baby was born? Was it the father oh, Zachariah. Of Zechariah. Yeah. I, I told him that and I, 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 I remember as I was resigning to leave, he told me now at that time, you will come back. And let me tell you, Erica, were it not for the fact that I have sweared to serve God and like Job, I have told God, empty I came and empty I shall go. Maybe I would have already gone back because the frustration to make me compromise and bow have been heavy. I was used to money, I was used to a good life, but I want to be very honest, things have not been the same again, not for me, not for my children, because as I'm waiting upon God, the temptations to go back and call this guy are so high. Also talking about gifts, we mentioned the fact that, uh, that Elisha, uh, refused the gifts that Naaman had offered to him. And then Gehas went ahead and took those gifts. And Elisha, Elisha went with him. He thought that, that he was sleeping, but he traveled with him because, you know, we are spirit beings. But when he came back, Elisha admitted as to why he, he refused the gifts that had been offered to him, in as much as they were, you know, very beautiful. But he said those gifts had leprosy. So there are many gifts that are being offered to people that have leprosy and people who are not in the spirit cannot discern. For example, my grandmother offered my mother beddings that were so nice and long lasting and beautiful. But before she, she brought the beddings to her, she had wrapped those beddings in a dead body and performed a ritual on them and then now passed them on to my mother so that my mother can be like a walking dead person. Whenever she would go to sleep, she would sleep like a dead body. You, you mm -hmm. can take anything in the house and my mother would never uh, notice. She could not smell. She lost her senses. The smelling sense, the tasting sense, she would not tell if there is salt in food or there is no salt in food. And then also she, my mother was, is an intercessor. So intercessor here from the spirit but from the time she got those beddings from my grandmother she could not even sense some sp serious spiritual matters because people ask me your parents were born again how comes you are serving the devil they in their house had. and they never they never had mm -hmm. and m your mother you say your mother was an intercessor yes she was an intercessor, but there was witchcraft that had been uh, done on her life through my grandmother. So those beddings were a point of contact. She would not hear. I would do things, and she's saying that this is not right, but she cannot hear from God on what to do about the things that I'm doing. And then she would see, and she's like a blind person. Jesus said they have eyes, but they cannot see. Ears, but they cannot hear. So uh, uh, it's during my deliverance that my mother found out that the beddings that she had been given by my grandmother had leprosy. And the, your grandmother the, was alive by now? She was alive by then. And things now were backfiring. You know, when we start deliverance, we don't send back to sender. But the person who has bewitched that person, the enemy has already entered into a covenant with them that should these things backfire, they will backfire on you. Even if it is the spirits that uh, have been working upon the, against the other person's life, those spirits don't want to go back into the wilderness. They will look for a vessel and they will be very, uh, they, they, they will be full of wrath. They'll be like, you sent us to somebody, and now we are being tormented. So when they go back, they go back to torment the one who sent them. So now my grandmother was now being tormented, being rushed 
from one shrine to another, uh, being taken, you know, to different pastors now after all the shrines had failed and she was now beginning to confess also what she had been doing. So all the clothes she had given me were not gifts. They were not good gifts. She had covenanted me through through those clothes, through the uh, inner wares. You know, parents, be careful. Like uh, your children are getting success cards. Be the first one to get them and pray over them and see if your spirit is okay. Your child is performing well. They have good grades. And then someone gives them a, a success card. And then all of a sudden, the grades change in the final exams and you're wondering how could my child fail this is a, a good performing student how don't allow anybody have access to your children directly they have to go through you as a parent you you have to 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 watch over this student because they are not at a level where they can understand these spiritual matters like you but we the parents and we have to train our children before they eat anything that has been offered to them they come and ask mommy auntie gave me this should I should I eat because I was initiated in such a way that you know I was offered things to eat I was being given gifts my mom is being given gifts my dad is also my my dad he was given a trouser that he put on because my dad loved my mom so much and he was so faithful but the moment he put on that trouser he started now cheating on my mom he started he, he changed my dad became um, a drunkard you know this is a person who was a minister he life at home changed the time I was getting delivered is when his mind rushed to the trouser that the mother had given him and after burning all that our family now got back to normal so saints so you are you are caging had tampered with the whole family yes the whole family they come with gifts but not every gift is a gift some people are given gifts on their wedding on their weddings and that's the beginning of the fail, uh, the failed marriage others are given gifts on their graduation and their their certificate becomes useless just by opening the gift so before we get so excited to open gifts we have to also pray birthdays baby showers baby shower. all of this yeah mm -hmm. yeah and most of the women um, i've i've noticed most of the women who show their bumps on baby showers like remember uh some time back there were some celebrities who went to display their baby bumps and mm -hmm. one of them lost the child at birth and another one miscarried you mm -hmm. know uh, wh why what's the point just keep <laughs> keep yes there are some things that are confidential even if of course you cannot hide a pregnancy but it's not something you should go and announce and expose yourself to the enemy yeah amen now jesus gave very clear examples when giving to the poor he says take heed from the sixth chapter of matthew from verse one take heed that you do not give to the poor before men to be seen of them Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do your alms, or when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your giving to the poor may be in secret and your father which sees in secret himself shall reward you openly so there are lots of you know organizations that give publicly yeah. and they want to be seen they want the whole world to see it they're violating that principle sometimes when we're giving to the poor we'll show people who is who actually being given to, because people are contributing you know that's their they it's also their money yeah they want to see where their money went but other than that there's that you know that philanthropy that we do privately we don't show anybody we don't tell anybody mm. but and it's an, and it's on a regular basis and the lord is in it because the amounts are just increasing over the you know month by month so um he he is and the lord gives specific instructions on how to give to the poor now the lord did not give any instructions on tithing people can tithe if they want to that's if that's your tradition at your church you have not sinned you can do so, but the Lord did not give any instruction on that. Paul, the apostle, did not give any any instruction on that. 
John the Revelator in the book of Revelations and, and St. John's Gospel, he did not give any instruction on that. Uh, Peter did not give any instruction on that. Mm. You know, Jude, none of the books of the New Testament, there are no such instructions. But each of them, almost, and James as well, there was no such instruction. But each of them have given instruction on giving to the poor. So, and you know, and there's no instruction there concerning sowing of seed. And I used to sow big seeds. I used to sow and sow and sow and I was always broke. <laughs> Erica complained because she said one day, hey, you give so much, you also wanted to sow me as a seed. <laughs> I, I, kind of, I, I kind of feel like if, if someone has to give, let them be led by God. Yes. Because they have been coerced. Yeah. Yes, it yes, came to a yes. point I almost wanted to be holding his wallet <laughs> before we entered any church. <laughs> I'll be in charge of the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Finance. <laughs> Minister of Finance. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> I think it is a, a scam. Eh? The, the issue of tithing is good. Hmm. But we, when you go even to Malachi, the verses that they use, the Bible says, so that in my house, that will be food. Okay. We are speaking about the body of Christ. If this is church A, this is the body of Christ. I think we need to listen to the Holy Spirit because you may try, uh, you, you may be uh, tithing religiously to where you are, but God is speaking to you because there's another church which is his body, which has no food. Mm -hmm. For instance, our churches at home, those pastors are struggling or a, a pastor next to you. Mm -hmm. He has started a church, maybe you know, for example like us. You find that now you are, you are going to a mega church, but God is speaking to you, send it to this one. Oh. But because you are tithing religiously, yeah. that is even why people are missing their blessings. Yes. Because yeah. we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And another thing, God will direct you to where the, the Holy Spirit is ministering. And another thing I yeah. know is that the, uh, Jesus was telling Peter, that uh, no gates of hell will prevail over my church. I know most of the churches, as they start, the Spirit of God has called the men of God. But along the way, they start depending on the flock. Mm -hmm. So the church is not bad because the church belongs to Jesus. Mm -hmm. As he's telling Peter that no gates of hell shall prevail over my church. And in the New Testament, we are the church. It starts from the personal altar to the family altar to the house. And if you look at your deliverance, Erica, and my deliverance, it happened at the altar. So at the altar, there is there is a lot of there is a lot of things that happens at the gathering of saints, as he is saying that do not neglect the gathering of saints. But the gathering of saints should not be manipulative. Yes. Because I feel like that is where we are all going wrong, where you are giving because, you, like a lady told me the other day, she gives a tithe of four thousand. Then the pastor calls her and asks her, No, God gave you 40. Where is the 36? You, you know. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> okay, How can before, you give God just for before and you've eaten that? Eh, there is a burning issue. Mm. So, when we get to my poor that the minutes, also, I want to speak about how to it true when you, 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 you realize that you have been working for these companies. Yes. It is always important to with the true you are back or to take back your authority to take back your authority because they yeah, are in prayer and also in written form ensure that you are you have written that from today i will not transact or going forward i will not transact any business with your company physically or spiritually because people are firing, leaving back their authority, and people are being and summoned. They're being, mm. yes. they're being summoned because therefore your document is summon you through the dreams. You find yourself, you are dreaming working for the company. That is not a dream. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, you are working. And yeah, that is when you find you cannot get any job somewhere else. Wow. Before, uh, after that, as long as you did not take your authority, they are still using you spiritually. Yes. Because now they captured yeah, you are saying soul. you are so mm -hmm. I'm a you are star. Mm. Yes. They have the gift. When they are captured that they will continue using you, you spiritually. Dennis to, From there you continue struggling getting And Dennis to, to speak on that. After I left now the second time, Bamboo, you know now I'm awake spiritually. Is when I realized most of the time I would dream actually with the wife of the MD giving me instructions to wipe their children's shoe. Oh. Yes. Oh, I, would dream, 
I would Those people dream. are foul. I'm telling you, <laughs> I so left. Foul. I left. I'm a minister. I am. I am ministering here. Me, I'm thinking I'm a full time intercessor and I'm a mother. And uh, but I'm st- at night when I sleep, I'm getting instruction from this MD. And I remember one morning I woke up and I did. You know, people again in these companies, they quit without doing handwritten. Mm-hmm. Hand, or, you know, there is power in handwriting. Just as God wrote to to Nebuchadnezzar and told Nebuchadnezzar, "Your time is up." Mm-hmm. People need to leave companies, and as you walked in, you did an application. As you leave, resign and write Officially. and declare to th- tell them, "Do not, I will not transact with your name, and equally do not transact with mine." Because yes. people are living physically. But spiritually, they are still slaves. So mm-hmm. as you look for jobs, you will never find. So what happened? You have to go back. Because that's the only employer who can employ you because you left them with the authority. And that is how I have been. That is how now I was talking about recruiters need to know that even as you're recruiting for this company, it is not physical as it looks. It is spiritual. Only after I left, I realized this guy as I was working for him, and again, I also didn't mention this. As you work for this company, there's a lot of dreams. You dream sleeping with colleagues. If you want to know that you're working for a company that its root is not of God, you will dream sleeping with your colleague because you have been given spiritual husbands in the company. So your marriage start failing. Yes. And most of the people in these companies, their marriages don't stand. Their marriages fail at some point. Why? Oh, especially if you work for the media. Oh, it's yeah. dirty. The media advertising that world is dirty. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, marriages usually fail in those in such in such companies and businesses. So I, I, I there's something you mentioned about Hindus. I didn't want to forget because it has been bothering my mind because I also worked with them. Uh, the Asians and uh, there's something you mentioned about Freemason and. Uh, Hindus and um, you see, I'm also here to learn as I'm testifying. Yes. You said about sheikhs. Yes. And, uh, I recently had a dream where I was uh, the name sheikh was being mentioned. Could you maybe enlighten something on such? Because people have ended up in these companies, Asians company, and they, they think it's okay to be a slave where you are being because of poverty. They think it's okay to be insulted, be be harassed be deducted salaries be abused be it's being abused because like for me i thought it is okay because my grandfather worked for such a company uh, actually it ended up with the, the call, a brother it ended up with it's, a, it's an asian company my father after finishing high school he landed in the same company his father worked in mombasa <laughs> road wow. yeah. after my brother that is my father my grandfather and his brother my after immediately my, my grandfather left he took my father there my father left my father took my brother there oh wow our firstborn brother then me do you see the chain yes there are altars. Uh, and the funny thing i came to realize about those brother and patterns the reason or how they came to resign is the same Yo. Wow. even manipulation <laughs> there the, the company for the grandfather and father they were sacrificing a goat if the machine stops. Now they advanced to the blood of a, pa- a person would be cut by a mirror. Now, when the father was leaving, he said, I, I will die in this company. Let because me my, get my out. My father was also cut because what, when a machine has a problem, they would slaughter a goat and the machine would function automatically. No mechanics, nothing. No mechanic, no nothing. Oh, they, that's they witchcraft. Deal with, they, deal with, <laughs> they deal with window panes. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, remembering an employee I recruited somewhere in an Asian company, she told me, nobody in our company will get pregnant and, and receive their babies. Even churches, you realize their churches, every time someone maybe in leadership conceives, th- th- there is a, never there's deliver. a, there's a, there's a miscarriage. miscarriage. So my father now resigned because he was cut by glass. And not knowing, maybe our grandfather initiated us as a family because me, I was nose, nose bleeding to me was very normal. Like I would not know, not normal nose bleeding where you just get first aid. Abnormal nose bleeding where neighbors will have to gather because the blood is 
you know bursting yeah oh flowing out so from oh, childhood that was happening and i remember at some point my mother making a comment where like could it be that your grandfather is not happy i, I, I cannot remember what she said but i have realized that part of our battle has something to do with our grandfather never arose and said no to slavery so the grandchildren and the children will mm-hmm. be slaves yes 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 and it it is the same cycle that you see in the book of exodus in genesis towards the end and exodus the children of god were slaves to mm-hmm. pharaoh mm-hmm. in fact if you look if you look on the one dollar bill i brought a few specimens you can examine also if you look on on the one dollar bill um on the back of the one dollar bill you see a pyramid mm. now where are the pyramids they're in egypt right in giza well what is it, a, an egyptian pyramid doing on an american one dollar bill it speaks to the source of the power that drives the economy just the same way as if you look at a Kenyan 1000 shillings you'll see a lion or you'll see a giraffe on the other uh, on the other currency maybe a rhino why because tourism drives our economy right right so what is the power that is driving the american economy is the power of pharaoh and pharaoh builds his cities on the backs of the children of god through slavery so america is functioning by the spirit of egypt yes so who rules so it doesn't matter who the president is the same system of pharaoh will continue to rule yeah. and if you see one of the one one of these dollars is probably about worth uh, 143 kenya shillings you know so we're working and we are forced to buy our petroleum and what not with us dollars mm. you know and 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 so on and so forth but we understand that we live in a financial system that is built on slavery so as god begins to set his people free in fact it's good that it's so wonderful that you came because what the spirit of god is saying is that he's going to begin delivering and setting his people free from the systems of slavery that have yes and the kingdom of god comes to destroy that system so when we're preaching the kingdom of god we're speaking about the destruction of that system and superimposing a superior system but the system that has that, freedom, that has freedom. Mm. and and it involves it it requires your involvement you have to be involved there has to be a buy in and and you know in the book of revelation it speaks about um the church he says and i saw a woman clothed with the sun mm-hmm. what does that mean that the body of christ the bride of christ was clothed with the glory of god and he said the moon was under her feet and upon her head she had a crown of 12 uh, with 12 stars the 12 tribes of israel but it's the it is the bride of christ clothed with the glory of god and the moon under her feet meaning that the powers of darkness were firmly under her feet now the, so the church once the church realizes how the powers of darkness are functioning mm-hmm. they will be firmly under their feet and they will begin to flourish and that is the flourishing of the kingdom of god and the scripture says my kingdom shall yet by prosperity be spread abroad that's in zechariah so as god's people begin to flourish above these systems of the kingdom of darkness because this system is oh in america this system flourishes and yeah. it flourishes worldwide because the system of the kingdom of darkness flourishes as others are suffering yeah. you see so you'll see the invasion of iraq and those people being dis- displaced over a million iraqis are dead mm. and what happens as their economy is now plundered this other economy is flourishing we're seeing the same thing in france that's why niger has the revolt they're revolting they're rebelling against the rule of france because france is plundering niger mm. niger remains in abject poverty while france rises it is the system of of witchcraft that as one is rising in the, the system of which the other one is being oppressed so the more your people are suffering the more they're depressed the more they're crying the more they are weeping the more these other ones It's are flourishing. throwing money the more they are balling the more they are flourishing 
You see, so God hates injustice. He says, I, the Lord, love justice. justice yes. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth. So as these things are now revealed, people begin to realize who they are in Christ. You were created by the creator to be creative. There is something you must provide that has to do with your gift, your talents, your giftings. And you must offer that to society. And you must do it from a position of self-employment. You cannot go to your enemy and expect to be lifted up. Yeah. Your enemy is going... You become a slave. The Hindu, the Hindu, before the Hindu opens his business early in the morning, he's lighting his incense. He's offering unto his gods. He's welcoming his gods into the business area, uh, into his into his marketplace. And everybody who works there is working for that for those spirits. So when God is setting his people free, first of all, he's going to reveal to you who you are. He's going to reveal, you know, the things that you're going through now. They're a manifestation, as I mentioned, of the things that are inside you. So that needs to change. In other words, you are part of the problem. But thank God you are also part of the solution. You can change your outcome by changing what's inside of you. You begin to speak differently. You begin to know who you are. Then you begin to produce that gifting and that talent as a as a as a service to others you begin to serve others and you can do so by being self-employed and you can start small despise not the day of small beginnings yeah start small you know there's guys who sell eggs on the side of the street never despise that guy that guy's bringing in maybe and two. He's, he's working in freedom and dominion yeah, yeah and nobody's shouting at him and screaming at him and calling him names so that man his business can expand and if he lives by the principle of god Oh, within one, two years, that guy is a boss. He'll be supplying yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't despise, don't be afraid of leaving a job just because somebody's telling you to compromise. If they're telling you to compromise, it's a sign that you're in the wrong People place. People are wondering, how can I quit a job paying 300000 100000 then where will I get such kind of a job again? Mm -hmm. And you know, people now, you, you, the other day, Erica was talking about, about uh, bowing as a man to gaze him. Mm -hmm. And having your rectums being uh, mishandled. Yes. But I'm also thinking in a HR department or in a company, you could be a HR manager or a finance director, but you're worse than the one who is bowing. Because as as this oppression is coming upon you because mm -hmm. of the position and the money you're getting, slowly I realize that's how depression is knocking in. Yes. Because you know this is not right, but you have bowed. Yes. You have written a termination letter knowing that for sure it is not it's not supposed to be like that but you have done it meaning either way you have crushed your inner person yes. so slowly you start dying you may mm. be driving a big car but you are dead yeah. god is looking at uh pharaoh abimelech and telling abimelech for 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 hanging out with sarai that i have looked at you and i'm seeing a dead person mm. so god and heavens could be looking at you but seeing a dead person but here in on earth you are being called a financial controller mm -hmm. but a financial controller who is being sent to kra to go and bribe you know that is not right mm -hmm. you you could be called a hr manager but a hr manager who is firing people and you know writing warning letters and you know those people have not done it but because of the money you are taking home you cannot say no that is worse than bowing and becoming a gay ambassador because yes. you have been taken to school and you know for sure that God is a God of justice. And I think at this particular point is where I came to a conclusion and I said, if it is of God, I know for sure there is the pain in the process of making. I said I will not recruit to these Asian companies and I will not go back to that company because the only businesses I know now is these two. Mm -hmm. recruit for the for the Asians or go back mm -hmm. but I said I'll not but instead I will wait and I will I, I, because I know for sure Jesus has come to give us abundance yes. and I know it is not the will of God that man suffered to poverty yes God is not a God of poverty but I said until I get the right genuine business to do I will not compromise 
go back to those recruit mm-hmm. actually bamboo even to date i'm given recruitment by those asian companies but i've said god if it means me sleeping hungry i let me sleep hungry but i'll not recruit amen you see because the enemy needs the servants of god to hand over the children of god imagine, to the enemy imagine he wants you to do that and one you day see? as I, they were writing me a check in a dream in a dream i was mm-hmm. called a transporter that's how i knew Why are you i was paying not gross? a recruiter oh. because i was their employee oh. and by the way not once not twice in the dream they have now come to me and you know pushing me to uh, to introduce them to another recruiter meaning even if i stopped i've given them someone else meaning i'm still partaking and supporting the wickedness mm-hmm. i want to speak to all recruiters who are doing this business of receiving people cv and getting people job in saudi and getting people mm. job in industry area yes. mombasa road parklands because mm. that's where that's where this operation is driving and i want to warn them you may not know any other business to do but do not trade men to slavery yes. do not take people to india do not take people to saudi arabia do not take people to industry area where you know they'll be called name and oppressed into depression because eventually on the day of judgment you will give an account one yes. thing i love about god not even once my children have slept hungry i have suffered resigning those businesses because as i was leaving that for my company i i left this year february they were giving me 100000 i looked crazy before even my husband leaving 100000 to come and wait upon the lord but one thing i love about god not once my children have been sent home for school fees god will always the bible says that he has a way that even the birds of the air do not know mm-hmm. it is good to try i know there is pain as you wait for god to give you a genuine business or a genuine source of income or even open a way because we have prayed for people and one of the beneficiary is actually my brother he got a job in the government God knows your next God knows a, a good job for you but until you resign that unjust system of pharaoh God is also not going to to come until he sees you surrender like Job said empty I came and empty I shall go until you tell God I'm in this place I'm resigning this job because I'll not compromise my integrity do not compromise because of money Yeah I have a friend who who was working for a very powerful media station he bought a car but he could not take the car to his place of work he would park somewhere and jump on a motorbike I asked him why why don't you drive to your place of I said the moment they find out that I have a car they'll start investigating they'll start uh, you know pinning me and saying that I'm taking money from their clients or I'm you know things of the kind so I park my vehicle here and I jump on a motorbike and that's slavery whether it's raining yeah so look look at acts chapter 4 the the, the principle concerning possessions is given acts chapter 4 from verse 32 bible says and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that ought of the things which they possessed was his own but they they had all things common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all and verse 34 says neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet but the bible doesn't say that the apostles went and bought condominiums and private jets in jerusalem no the bible says laid them down at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need you see so when even if they're gathering tithes i said it's not a sin if they're gathering tithes what it is what does it say in malachi it says that there may be meat in mine house yeah. what was the storage what was that storage for what was that meat in the father's house for for distribution to the widow to the orphan to the stranger in the land who had converted to become you know a, a, a one who practices judaism 
You see, so it was God always, his heart and his mind is always on those that have nothing. It's, he's always standing with them. So in Psalms 109, he says, The Lord stands on the right hand of the poor to deliver them from those that condemn his soul. Imagine. So the poor man, his soul is being condemned by society. Imagine God is standing on the right hand of that poor man. That's why in Matthew 25, the poor, the, the, the sheep and the goats are separated based on this, based on this principle. He says, I was hungry, you fed me, I was thirsty, you gave me drink, I was naked, you clothed me. Then the righteous asked him, when did we do those things for you? And he says, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you were doing it for me. He never mentioned, oh, I was at church and you brought 10%. Or and even though it's good, let them do it. Um, he never mentioned, I was, I, I, I was the man of God whom, to whom you sowed a seed. He didn't say that. Now, just imagine if every Christian in this country were to adopt one family from the slum. There would be no more slum. And we cannot guarantee, we cannot depend on the government to do it. Why? We already know the president's hands are tied. He's a puppet for the West. He has to take loans. And those loans, he has to guarantee that the people will pay those loans. And how are the people going to pay the loans? By being taxed. That's why you're hearing stories about taxation, new finance bill. I'm going to bring in three trillion. My, my predecessors brought in one trillion. I'm going to bring in three. In other words, he's saying if my predecessors, if my predecessors beat you with whips, I'll beat you with scorpions. <laughs> so, before you move away from tithing. So the, so the president cannot do it. The government cannot do it. The government cannot help the poor. We have to. We are the people. We are the ones are who the are people. going to do it. So I challenge every man, every every Christian out there, get some get someone off the street, get one person off the street. Let's start. Let let the church just start moving, and thank God it's not centralized. It's out there. We don't we we don't know we we don't As know who's watching. Leads, yes. As the spirit, As leads, spirit leads, leads, go forth and do this thing. You'll be amazed. Before you move out of tithing, let me also because we've been in altar ministry. I can tell you. One of the scam and the scheme of the enemy, he will bring you for ministers now. This one, ministers who who are greedy for money, the best tithers will be from his kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you are the kind of minister who bows for money, you will be brought those ladies, those men who are sleeping with girls, you know, as a minister. But you know, remember you are a minister. One of my battles now, Erica in ministry, has been rebuking sin. Because mm. when I say no, they all arise against because my husband is polite. Me, I'm the bad one. So <laughs> at some point, they almost shook our marriage and broke us because anytime I attack sin in the altar, because they all want to stay near Pastor Rose and Pastor Dennis, they are bringing their tithes. But me, for sure, I can see compromise. So mm -hmm. when I speak about compromise, they threaten to leave. Mm -hmm. But uh, until a minister is at that point whereby I will rebuke sin, even if you live with your tithes. Yes, you uh, have to be that strong. You have to be strong. So, they, and even if they come with stolen money, take your stolen money back to where you stole it from. Even if you have politicians in the house that have stolen from the national kitty, the national budget, Take that money back. I will not accept your tithes if your tithes are stolen. I'll not accept your offerings. I'll not accept your seed if it is stolen. Take it back. Now, when actually, we have men of God like that, actually, now where the church we'll is not, actually where the church is not working in power, it is because a minister cannot tell people immorality is a sin because everybody in the church is sleeping with with one another. Mm -hmm. So hence. The minister is also not working in power and authority to rebuke sin because you are afraid of tithe living. Mm. Me and Pastor Dennis have been left at some point with a congregants of 10, <laughs> 5, because even if you're the best tither and you mm -hmm. compromise, mm -hmm. me, I'll not take it. Amen. And let me tell you, we are not targeting the crowds. It's about people going to heaven. Yes. Even, I remember Dennis keeps saying yes. in the ministry, Amen. Dennis keeps saying in the altar, we better <laughs> yes. go to heaven three mm. than have a congregation of a thousand and take them to hell. Yes. Why? They sat with you. You never told them to stop sinning. You never told them immorality is a sin. All you cared about is going, giving your tithe. I want to speak as a minister. Even if you give your tithes and you don't stop sinning, 
you will still land you'll in end hell. up in hell and if you're using that church that god has given you as a platform now to embezzle funds from the government if the if the politicians <laughs> are bringing their money to embezzle the funds yeah. through your church because the bank won't ask you mm. where did the money come from because they know you have a church but if you're using your funds to embezzle money you're going to hell hell don't deceive yourself <laughs> Does that tell people that if you don't tithe, you won't make heaven? That's a yeah, that's that false thing. doctrine. That's <laughs> false doctrine. Actually, <laughs> actually, Paul in the book of Romans twelve one says, "I beseech you above all things, give your bodies as yeah. a living sacrifice." Before you put your offering on that sadaka, yeah. If you've not God given God your heart and your body, mm. even your offering will not. It's unacceptable. Give your body. That's that's the number one thing that God wants. Yes. Your spirit, soul, your body. Give yourself. That's what He wants. God doesn't have issues with money. There's no dollars in heaven. <laughs> there, he doesn't have issues. No, There's no what, shillings there in this, heaven. This topic brings <laughs> to Illuminati, or rather the marine kingdom at the altar. It is all about, as long as you're giving your money, you will go to heaven. But that is not true. Th and that manipulation tried to happen to us. Manipulation. The enemy is manipulating ministers to have an assistant. I remember Dennis... Every time an assistant comes to assist him with stuff in the church, they would bring us, they would manipulate and send this one. Dennis is not compromising. I'm not compromising. But they bring an assistant who will stand on the pulpit. But this assistant wants to have all the girls in the church. So at some point, I really don't blame the ministers. But they also need to wake up and know that the devil is manipulative. Were it not for the fact that we realized he's manipulating us and we started now addressing these assistants who are coming because they're the most committed people in the church. They know what the men of God are lacking. They are lacking faithful workers in the altar. So they will be coming early in the morning, but while they are coming early in the morning, they also want to have an affair with all the girls. So meaning they are hurting all the girls in the altar because... Erica is hoping to get bamboo. Rose is hoping to get bamboo. Catherine is hoping to get bamboo. So as bamboo is walking next to the minister, girls are crying. We are thinking they are filled by the Holy Spirit. Kumbe, they are also being hurt by the right hand man of the servant of God. I feel because all ministers were called by God. Nobody may, would call themselves. The church belongs to Jesus. No man of God will stand and say, uh, I'm a, a man of God if they are not called by God. But majority have been manipulated and they have compromised. Why? The appetite for money and fame and numbers. And until we get to that point where we don't care about fame, about money, and we don't care about being loved by people. The Bible says actually being loved by the world is being hated by. And until we get to that point whereby it's not about numbers, it's about the kingdom of God the church will not walk in power. But even as revival is coming, God will still use the church, but only unto the few, because I know there are radical remnants who will not bow. They are still there. Elijah was telling God, I'm the only one left. But God yeah. said, yeah. there are 4,000. I have 7,000. Is it actually. 4 or 7? Yeah, yeah. I have 7,000 who have not bowed. I have a There's a remnant. That some of the people that are watching us have compromised uh, some have even gone far to an extent of sleeping with their bosses for jobs and offers. And uh, due to this information that we have given, they, they are asking, how do we get out? I have compromised. I have slept with the boss. I have uh, cheated on my wife. I have even corrupt, I, given bribe. Yes, I've given bribe. To the recruiter, yeah. I'm recruiting. And I'm, I, I've realized what I'm doing is wrong. So how do I get out of, of this situation? I think you should help like uh, elaborate on that and also pray for them. Mm -hmm. first, of, first and foremost, repent. Yeah, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right, from there, commit no more corruption. Commit. No more bribing, no more trying to take a shortcut, no. If, if God has not opened that door, that door is not for you. If you bribe to open that door, you're entering into a room filled with devils. And if you, if you mess with devils, if you lay down with dogs, you'll get the fleas. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's you can guarantee it. Also, have a strategy now. Begin your strategy of getting out of that place. First of all, a portion of everything that you're paid belongs to you. In other words, always separate a portion for yourself. Separate some for the poor, separate some for your church, but always separate something for yourself. Only a fool spends everything they have every time they're paid. Take a portion of that. It's the it's the same as during the election time when the president or to be puts a vote in his own ballot box. It means that in sometime in the future, I believe in myself, so I'm not going to pay everybody and fail to pay myself. Pay yourself first. So pay yourself a portion of whatever you've been paid. Always keep a portion for yourself. Why? You are saving so that you can invest in assets that can pay you. You're investing in a thing that can pay you, a system that can pay you, that pays you every day whether you are awake or you're asleep. You are saving your money every time you get paid. You, you keep on saving and preparing for an opportunity that will present itself for you to invest in something that will pay you every day and you will not have to um, um, supervise it. It pays you whether you are there or not. Such things exist. Bamboo in such a company where you are being deducted for lateness, like you're taking home 12,000, your landlord is waiting, your child is going to school, how will you save? Okay. In readiness to, to leave. In that situation, you are in an oppressive situation. Don't be afraid to start from the bottom. I know, I know you, pay, you must pay the price. You must be willing to go through whatever it takes to be able to come to a place where you can stand on your own two feet. Even Erica and I did the same thing. We we went back to the slum. <laughs> Bam, Bam, I me, mean, I was in the in slum. The I was our rent was fifty dollars. That's five thousand Kenya shillings. That's what I, that was our rent. We went and we went to we, I went to the slum. Yeah, yeah. I went to the slum. We stayed there, but we knew number one, we have God. Number two, nobody's oppressing us. Number three, we can afford our rent. So you dropped the offers. Yeah, I drop everything. I dropped everything. No more club. No more nothing. Even if uh, you know, like even Jameson had called for a, for concerts and whatever, uh, come and endorse our product and we'll pay you. And I needed the money, but I refused. Why? Compromise of integrity. I said, let me st better to start from scratch. But it, the good thing about starting from scratch in the Lord is that it's the last time you'll ever have to start from scratch. Amen. It's the last time. Amen. Once you start from scratch really in him, you honor. build on a solid foundation. Once you start with him, you build on a solid foundation. Jesus compared that to a wise man. He said, whosoever will hear my words and live his life by my words, I'll compare that man to a wise man who built his house upon a rock and the winds blew and the rains came but that house stood because it was built upon a rock, meaning it was built upon the principles of the word of God. He said, the foolish man, I'll compare him to the man who built upon the sand. And when the winds came, the winds of change, the storms and the circumstances and the situations and the scenarios of life, as they change, the, vicissitu the vicissitudes of events transpiring, as they changed, they beat upon that house and great was the fall thereof. And many of us have experienced that. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me let me start from scratch. Whoever is with me as I'm starting from scratch, those are the ones who really love me. A, a great <laughs> deal of fake everybody. friends, a great deal of fake friends were eliminated <laughs> as I was starting from scratch. It's yeah. good to start from scratch yeah, you because you, yeah, you'll know who your true friends are and you need to know who your true friends are. You need to know that Jesus is the one true friend that you really have. You need to and know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So either, even there in the slum, he was with me and it mm -hmm. was there in the slum that he began to teach me the principles that I know now, the principles that I've taught in, even in the truth about money is where I learned in the slum is where I learned those things and I began to apply those principles and we came out and it was and it was it didn't take that long to come out but we were never employed by anybody even now we are not employed by anybody except God yes. God is my boss yeah. and that's where God wants every believer where you are in a position where God is your boss oh, how long did that take place 2015 to 2019 yeah 2015 because I, I think that's where me and Dennis are we've we've dropped all this recruitment we, we we in church we 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 actually now even in our state we will still have a needy case where they are looking at pastor as one who maybe 
be having because we also have a very needy congregation mm-hmm. because of of course as we are starting we are not even many will have confidence in you because you're also not coming with a lot of weight in mm-hmm. your pockets you know even why people are following in those mega tents and mega churches is because they are also looking at if i have a problem at least people mm-hmm. are going to mobilize and yes. bail me out yes. so like now as we started with the kamabati church whereby even the uh, even the, 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 the but some sides were mm-hmm. open actually it was actually the roof mm-hmm. the 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 sides were just open so we don't have a flock that you'd say you are depending on tithe you're depending on staff yeah but so we, we've been in that place whereby day by day we 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 we, we are waiting upon the lord it's not easy but the people who are coming are worse than him. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But did he knew that these people will be mighty men of valor. Amen. Yeah, yes. in his team. Let us yes. continue waiting Bill. upon it's the Lord. Wait, wait on the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Build, <laughs> build your people. It's those people who's, who, who he has sent you to build. Yeah. Yeah. He sent you to build those people. Mm. Build them up from scratch. Yeah. But when he begins to 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 bless you through them you'll be amazed you'll be amazed because it'll be permanent it's not something that you're doing actually it's like that, that they, is temporary it's actually like for, i would say we still need it but mm-hmm. we are needy but it's like we because we also god also sent us those radical remnants and uh, they, they also don't have jobs so yeah, you understand so you are purely teaching them the word of god the mm-hmm. money is not coming in here as a discussion anywhere because who are you telling about money these people sometimes even maybe after ibada someone will tell you pastor i don't have food mm-hmm. so sometimes i'll even go to my kitchen one um, maybe i remaining two packets of maize flour i'll get one end share because bamboo i want to be honest i always feel like i always i always mm-hmm. feel like yes, i always feel like I always mm. feel like a, li- a lioness. I feel like Samson after he'd been denied the energy. I loved giving to the poor. I loved giving to the churches. That was me. So right now, even when a need case comes and I can I cannot help, I always I, I I I crash and I cry to God because I always ask him, God, uh those days maybe I would even stand with a case of a child who who need school fees. But here I am waiting upon you, and um, it's not easy. But one thing I am confident in is that you cannot seek and serve the Lord in vain. Amen. Amen. Even Elijah, when Elijah gave, when Elijah told the woman to give her last, mm-hmm. he wasn't a rich man of God. He was he was fleeing from the face of Jezebel. Of Jezebel. He was poor and he was hungry at the time. Like we are he running had, away from Jezebel <laughs> ourselves. Mm. Uh, yes. So when she gave her last. She activated the principle of giving to the poor. It wasn't the principle of giving to the prophet. He was poor at the time. He was hungry at the time. And that is why her cup never ran dry from that moment. So let me tell you, you are on a path to greatness. Do not worry. You are on the path. We passed through the same thing. Yeah. And we are sure every day that we, this path leads to every life. Every day we are praying and we are saying, we will not bow. We will not bow. Amen. We will not bow. But then... Erica, sometimes I look at my children and I remember how those days I would be able to pay their school fees, would pay, pay their school fees in advance. And here we are. But one thing I've loved about this lifestyle is where we have taught our children that we are weak, that we are not all powerful, that we depend on another power, that we have taught our children to even pray for us. That even before they initially they would come and tell, Mom, I want a pizza. But now as they come, they also come with that humility of life and they tell us do you have money mom they even write us mm. matthew 7 7 ask and it shall be given unto you mm. and a child cannot a child cannot ask for a bread and they are given stone and i'll carry that paper to church and i'll tell god see the confidence in this child mm. maybe it a crash because maybe they knew us when we would buy them bikes and stuff they needed but from money that was not right in ways that were compromising our integrity one thing i love about it now is that even if we don't take our children to the best school we have introduced them to our source of help 
to the kingdom of God. Amen, yes. amen, also, amen. To, to make ourselves clear, we are not telling people not to write wills mm. because it's good <laughs> to also plan for, for the future and yes. to make sure that uh, your children and your family is in order. And but we're also not telling people that the whole entire Asian community is the same. No, there are Christians among them. We're talking about specific people who practice, you know, Hinduism in their companies. They have, they're this. They're also the Sings. There are also some Buddhists that practice Freemasons who have companies who have banks, you know, and people will go and borrow from those banks and and they, they don't know that their documents are being taken to a Freemasonic altar. So you'll pay off half half the house which is the actual value of yes. the house you'll pay off half the house then some evil will be for you and they'll come back and foreclose on the house and do the same process over and over again until they're the number one bank in the country so that that cycle of slavery is is, is very real but yeah it's it's this this talk is not about um, oppressing any kind of or or dismissing any kind any any race but there are those in this country the Asians, most of them here yeah. are Hindu mm. or or uh, Singh mm -hmm. or, um, you know, uh, maybe Buddhist or Muslim. So they will utilize their altars in their place of business. And so you need to know that, you know, and and they use those spirits to enslave men. So, amen. Yeah. amen. So we're, watch for the signs. Watch, watch for the signs. Uh -huh. amen. And also when you walk into your company early in the morning, you don't know what was chanted well before you walked in. So make a word of prayer as you walk into your office desk every morning. Just before you sit on that chair where you sit, just pray because you don't know the declarations. Because every time I walked into the office and started praying and welcomed the MD for prayer, he would always cancel my prayer by saying, but my declarations still remain. Mm -hmm. I think so pray quietly in your place of work you know we're, we're almost out of time but but pray quietly in your place of work don't be a weirdo in there don't be in there like Rabaka, so come on now that's that's yeah that's a neutral place <laughs> where everyone is allowed to be there you know but go, go early and, yes. and pray quietly yes. or be the last one to leave and pray quietly over that place yes, you yes. know and nullify witchcraft and sorcery and all the power of the devil mm. you might find though they might want to remove you because if you're making their altar weak <laughs> yeah before we close in prayer we have a, a small gift to offer them and then on my birthday i would i would love to to also send some charity to mm -hmm. to those people in the church there Amen. Yeah. Yes. If you would like to stand with them and um, the people in their congregation, what's the size of your congregation right now? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It's so. okay. It's okay. Even if there are two or three, yeah. that's how we started. In fact, I was I was the preacher and Erica was the congregation and I would preach and Erica would say, Amen. A very loud amen. <laughs> it's a time I remember telling Dennis, we are doing ministry full time that's why I'll not go back to that company. Then then he himself asked me, What ministry? Because even us sometimes we are looking at the much effort we go there every morning to pray. But then the first the member is not actually our problem because we are not because we know at at God's time he causes people to come. But uh the the growth the growth rate is really yeah, the, the 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 issue. If you would like to stand with them, just mention in the in your uh, communication. This is for Pastor Dennis and Pastor Rose, and um, please remind the me of your, your is last in the name. Description box. Dennis Mawera. Mawera, yeah. yeah, the Maweras. So this is for the Maweras, and yeah, we would love to um, stand with them as we always do with with guests that come here. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the gift of revelation and wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you are giving your people. We thank you for the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might that gives us the authority. Thank you for the authority that is in the name of Jesus, that the Lord has given us that power of attorney to speak with his name. And now that we know who we are, we pray, mighty Father, with repentance in our heart, in our heart, first of all, wherever we have compromised, wherever we have bribed or wherever we have compromised our integrity, please forgive us. We change, we, we, we turn away from sin and we choose to turn a new page in life. We know that this kingdom is built on integrity and honesty 
and forthrightness and justice and so we we choose justice we choose integrity we choose Jesus and so mighty father we pray that you forgive us we pray that every witchcraft spell that is working on every any employee any servant anywhere may that witchcraft be broken may those altars be silenced may those as sacrifices be silenced by the blood of Jesus. Yes. May every strategy of the kingdom of darkness to enslave the children of God be broken now. Amen. We shake it because we know that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. Jesus is right here with us. And so by the power of attorney, we crush those altars. We bind those familiar spirits. We break the shackles of bondage and of slavery. And we replace those things with the wisdom of God, with the kingdom of God, with the love of God, the revelation and the wisdom to understand the systems that govern this world. And now we superimpose the kingdom of God upon every spirit, soul, and body of every listener who is listening, who is under the sound of my voice. We thank you, mighty Father, that he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We pray that you would reveal to them their true gifts and that they may begin to refine those gifts and then offer those gifts as services to be a blessing to society and thereby begin to rise in society and fulfill their God-given gifts and talents and their destiny and their purpose. We pray for the restoration of stars that had been stolen, destinies that had been stolen. Let them be restored. Let them be returned. Birthrights that had been stolen. Let them be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, he said, I will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar and the locust have devoured. Mighty Father, let those things be restored. Let the stars of your children be restored and let them come out triumphant from the place of bondage. As Moses command, told Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. Let God's people go in the mighty name of Jesus, wherever they are, everywhere in the world. Let them go for mortgages, that 30-year mortgages. They don't need to work that long in order to own homes. They can own a home by the power of God in one year, two years. The Lord can give them a home paid for paid for vehicles, paid for furniture, everything paid for. They don't need debts. Let your people come forth out of debts in the name of Jesus. We cancel the ruthless cycle of debt living. We cancel that cycle in the name of Jesus. And finally, Father, we pray that you would bless your people with an exit strategy of how to come out from indentured servitude and slavery. Bless them with with the amount of money that they need to come out and to start their own businesses. For it is written, 1 Thessalonians 4.11, that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your hands as we commanded you. So I pray, mighty Father, that, that businessmen and businesswomen and professionals in the kingdom of God may begin to shine forth in the kingdom of their Father. And that they may be blessed and be a blessing to others in a manner that is pleasing in your sight, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Give them gifts quickly. Yes. Allow us to give you our small gift. Yes. Yeah. This is a small Thank gift. You. Life is spiritual. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. We love you. Yes. And we'll keep in touch. I know this is not the last. Not the last. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, we love you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Speak Amen. when you're praying. Remember them in your prayers. Remember yeah. all of us in your prayers. Mm. We thank you. And you are new champions <laughs> amen. 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 not every church is compromising not every minister is looking for offerings some are genuinely serving the call of god do not be afraid of reaching out to ministers not all of them are following for your money some have been genuinely called by god and they are seeking god diligently god bless you we'll definitely visit the church amen yeah. god bless you we love you